Hey, how's it going? It's Neil Parfit here. Welcome to video number 16 of getting started with the ER301 sound computer. Today I thought I'd show you guys some uh, just different approaches to more complicated patches and maybe a performance situation. And uh, let's, I'll just show you what I'm up to here. So, um, I'm just going to show you how I've mixed and matched a whole bunch of things and how a whole bunch of things can work together. And uh, let's get started. So I have four mixers that are collapsed, uh, pads, drums, synth, and ARP. And let me just show you what I'm up to. Um, so let me just unmute this drum, or unbypass this drum strip. And if we go into this, I have a custom unit with all this drum stuff in it. Go into that. I have a whole bunch of mixers with individual elements. So, got a Tyco, a Tyco 2. Tyco 2 has a sine wave modulating the pan, which you can see. Um, and each one of these, just so you can see it, is actually a sample player being triggered. So it's this audio file with a whole bunch of stuff, as you can see. And I'm just picking different slices, triggering a sample. And Tyco 1 is the same thing, just triggering something else. And this loop, same thing. It's within that exact same file, it's just re-triggering every measure. And it's all from a gate storm off to my right that's triggering all this stuff. So there's my drums or my loop, I guess you could call it. It's a combination of a whole bunch of elements. And let's back out of this. And I'll just bypass that for a second. And just to show you, um, I also have one called Synth. I'll bypass that. And I'll just play my keyboard here. And if you guys can recognize that, that's uh, my Neely Moog patch from the other day where I sampled my Mother 32 and made a patch out of it. If I go into the synth mixer, um, oh, you'll notice that uh, there's actually nothing in here but a verb return and it's tapping off out three. And I did that so I could get my reverb on here. So my reverb is actually an RT60, an external unit being fed a signal and then it's being looped back into the 301 on uh, C2 and 3. So I'm actually I actually have a stereo return for that reverb. So it's it's nice not having to work in mono all the time. And our out 3, if we go to channel 3, this is our actual uh, Neely Moog patch that I made the other day. So if I open it, I have a whole bunch I have a few mixers and a noise, I have a filter and I have my VCA. And each one of these oscillators is actually a sample player uh, looping that waveform that I recorded from Mother32. So already there's a lot going on, um, but we don't have to concern ourselves with the actual synth building blocks. We can go back to our linked channel one and two, which has our, reaver, or, uh, our synth. That's pretty good, actually. Um, I'm just gonna turn on the uh, the drums, so both the synth and the drums are playing at the same time. So here's the thing, if I was mixing this, the, the drums are pretty full range as, a, as far as how much frequency is occupying, and the synth is the same thing, it's sort of occupying this massive amount of space in the mix. So here's an approach to uh, sort of circumvent that problem. Um, if we go into the drums, I'm going to add an EQ after the drums 
and I'll turn them on in a second. I'm just doing this without having to hear it. So we could decide, you know, we could scoop out the mids a little bit and that would give more of a space uh, for that synth sound. But we can do something else that's even more sort of dynamic. And that is we can duck this signal when, well, we can, we can adjust this fader when we play the synth sound. So how do we accomplish that? We'll uh, go to the modulation source of this MIDI cue and we'll set this, the source input to our synth, which is on out three. There it is, I'm just touching the keys. We still can't hear it, I just have it muted, but we can still see what's happening. So there's our synth signal. And then if we actually insert an envelope follower after that, it's gonna give us a nice CV signal that we can then use to modulate that uh, that mid-range gain parameter. So we don't want it really fast. We want it to be like a nice slow release. So the moment we, we press the keyboard and the synth triggers, it will immediately clamp down on that fader and then slowly go back to normal when, when we release instead of it being a jerky instantaneous drop. We want it to be sort of smooth and, and buttery, I guess. So there's our uh, our signal, and you know what? I'm just gonna back out of here, and I'm gonna just unmute the drums. Go back in. So I'm gonna set the gain to a minus level. If I increase, if I set it to a positive number, the mid range fader is gonna jump up, and we want the the reverse to happen. So I'm gonna set it to a minus number. So I'm playing the keyboard right now, and notice how the you can hear the mid-range is sort of scooped out. And I'll let go. You can see this drop down as soon as I touch a key. And then I'll let go again. So there you go. A very simple way to duck a signal. I mean, if you wanted to duck this entire sound, instead of mod instead of modulating this EQ band, you could just put a VCA right on the end of this entire signal, and the signal will automatically get quieter as soon as that synth sound kicks in. So let's hear these two together now. Uh... They're playing a little bit nicer now in the mix. I don't know if you'll be able to pick that up on the phone, but uh, it's it sounds a little bit more uniform in here. So that's kind of cool. That's one approach to uh, sort of tweak the mix automatically. So let me show you what else I have going on. Uh, I have this thing called Pad. And it's a mixer. Within that, I have a sample player. And I have a limiter after that just to up the gain but not let it not allow it to peak. And after that, I have it going into a looper set to a quarter note. And it's randomly punching in based on some signals coming from my gate storm. So this will never sound static. It will just sound continuously different. So there's sort of my backing pad. And I also have this thing called ARP. And if we open that, I have a sine wave oscillator. It's being controlled by the same keyboard. And there's a gate triggering the level of this, which has an ADSR on it. And after that, I have that feeding a looper. So let's see what happens here. So I'll engage the arpeggiator on my KB37. Okay, so let me try something here. And what I've done is I have my modulation wheel set. So if I kick it up, it'll kick it out of punch. And now we have a static loop. 
which means I can press the keyboard and it's not going to affect this sound. So as that's running, I could actually switch back to my synth and then And I've kicked out of that uh, the ARP loop record again. And let me just try something else here. So I'm gonna kick out a punch again. So that's just running by itself. And I'm gonna just play that synth again. And I don't have that arpeggiator reclocking, so it is drifting out of time. But it actually doesn't bug me, so I'm just gonna leave it. messing around but uh, you can see there's a lot going on and I'll just mute all this stuff I've actually upped my pad an octave because it's in the sample layer kick out of my uh, my arp loop record I don't really know where I'm going with this, but uh... <laughs> so now that sample's locked again. I'm not touching the keyboard again. I'll engage my uh, my other synth. I think I tuned it to the wrong uh, pitch, though. Oh yeah, I think I was one semitone out. Oops. So. Anyway, so just, just some ideas for some uh, a whole bunch of stuff going on at the same time. And I think the CPU load for all this happening is... Uh, we're sort of at the top. Uh, we're at 78% CPU usage. But keep in mind, there's, uh, there's two loopers, there's at least eight sample... No, actually, more like 10 sample players. Uh, there's a whole bunch of ECAs, mixers... Um, so as you can see, you can sort of stack this all up and build something pretty compl complex. But uh, again, I could say shift, quick save, and let's say I save it to slot number four. If I start up the next day and all my stuff's wired the same, I can just pick up where I left off. So, you know, if I, if I was done here and I had to go to play a show or something, leave everything connected, power down, load this up later, and uh, we're good to go. So uh, there you have it. Uh, just some more ideas. Okay, cheers.